Hello everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of Behind the Beta, where I will be looking at Paper Mario Sticker Star. The development history of this game is saddening, yet intriguing, as it went from a game very reminiscent of the older Paper Mario games, to something nearly unrecognizable. In this video, I will cover Sticker Star's development history from the E3 2010 build all the way to its release, and I'll also show some unused content. And I won't be alone, as Fawful the Great 64 and Penky YT will also be joining me in this video. Hello, hello, hello! I am your beloved Jamie V, aka Fawful the Great 64, and it is an honor to be here. I remember back in 2010 being incredibly hyped for the upcoming first handheld Paper Mario as a diehard fan of the entire series up to that point. I even made terrible fake box arts in my excitement. Sadly, the final game ended up killing most of the things that I loved the series for, so I am excited to be a part of this deep dive into the fourth Paper Mario's turbulent development. Hey y'all, Penkey here. I'm a big fan of the modern Paper Mario games, especially Paper Mario the Origami King. So without further ado, let's take a look at the development of Paper Mario Sticker Star. The first footage that was ever shown of Paper Mario Sticker Star was at E3 2010, where a minute-long video was played on 3DS demo systems. This footage and press release look drastically different from the final game, as they resemble 64 in the Thousand Year Door. There was a Chain Chomp partner that was shown, and had an overworld ability, and assisted in battles like the partners in the first two games. The worlds looked much different too, since there was a forest area with candy pops, a desert, a fortress, and a maze with playing cards. The backgrounds also look very different, as they appeared to look very storybook-esque, almost similar to Paper Mario 64's backgrounds. The music in the trailer is also an early version of Blue Sky's White Clouds, and is reminiscent of the music in Paper Mario 64 and the Thousand Year Door. The enemies retained the designs from the first three Paper Mario games as seen with the Goomba, Koopa Troopa, and Pokey in the screenshots. There's also a very long Wiggler that walks out of a hole in a tree and across the path. The Wiggler also has a pink flower similar to the unused Wiggler sprite in Super Paper Mario. Another enemy that appears, different from the final game, is a Womp, which is much smaller than it is in the final boss and would have likely been a normal enemy. Finally, there's the King Monty Mole boss that throws a boulder at Mario in the screenshot. Its appearance is somewhat similar to Monty Mole's in Paper Mario 64, and the fact that he throws a boulder is likely a reference to how Monty Mole's threw rocks in PM64. The overall gameplay of this build is mostly unknown, but from what we can tell by the screenshots, it looks about to be halfway between the Paper Mario 64 and Final Sticker Star battle system. While the stickers seem to be used as attacks in the game, their appearance is very similar to the badges in Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door specifically, with the multi-bounce-like sticker in one screenshot. This possibly meant that stickers could have worked like badges or were inspired by badges. As I mentioned earlier, partners could be used in battle, but I'm unsure if they would have used stickers or just standard attacks. Other than the Chain Chomp, there are actually a few other unused partners that were found in the files of the game. Mr. Slit, who likely gave you the ability similar to the Paper Mode Curse in TTYD, a Goomba partner, and Kirsty, who was obviously used. Given that Tanabe later stated that partners were removed because of the sticker system, that implies that the partners probably used a sticker in battle. An early version of the paperization ability was also shown at E3 2010, but the object is still placed onto the screen rather than the screen turning into a photograph. Unfortunately, we don't know much about this build, as we only have yet to find a full trailer from E3 2010. Currently, we only have the audio, a 15 second clip from Nintendo World Report, and the 10 screenshots shown in Nintendo's press release. Fortunately, there's more evidence found in the game's files that can be traced to this build specifically. The animation where Mario directs the chain chomp is used in the final game with two cutscenes. There is also a sprite showing early UI elements to the style the similar to Thousand Year Door like action command buttons, boots, hammer, a home button, and an unused a diamond icon. There are also unused data values for star points or so EXP was possibly implemented into this build. 
The second time footage released for Snicker Star was three months later at Nintendo Conference 2010. This event is where Nintendo showed off a lot of information about the 3DS, and it included a 5 second clip of Paper Mario along with a press release that included a few screenshots. In this build, the art style drastically changed as it appeared much closer to the final game. This shift in development likely occurred after Miyamoto told Tanabe that the E3 2010 build looked too similar to the Paper Mario 64. The background scene in the short clip and the screenshots are inspired by New Super Mario Bros. Wii with the Mushroom Hills and everything appears paper-like which was the first time that this occurred in the Paper Mario series. Whether you agree with this art style change or not, this was a major change and it led to the current art direction of the Paper Mario series. The grasslands were also the only area shown in this build, so there's a possibility that it was the only area that was fully converted to this new art style in that build. One of the screenshots resemble warm fuzzy plains from the final game, but has more blocks and enemies and has a different bridge model. Their gameplay seems much closer to the final version of the game since there are no partners and the stickers seem to function like they do in the final game. Though the frog suit sticker functions as an attack rather than a defense as it is in the final game, and this was likely a replacement for the multi-bound sticker that was shown in E3 2010. The battle area itself is also very similar to how it appeared in earlier builds since it has a camera angle to the side rather than an isometric angle. There was also a rainbow S meter seen in the footage in many screenshots. Its function was unknown, but there has been a lot of speculation about it. Some have speculated that it is similar to the star power from the first two Paper Mario games, or is sticker related. One of the most interesting aspects of this build wasn't even shown in any of the press release screenshots, but it was a screenshot found in the files of the game. This screenshot showed an orange snake-like enemy that was unused in the final game. This enemy was likely known as the Mander, because that's the name of an unused sprite in the files that shows a silhouette of its head. There is also an unused enemy found in the files known as Zekomander, which further proves that this enemy was likely going to be known as the Mander. The screenshot likely originated from this build because the battle area looks identical to the ones from the official footage and press releases. It's unknown whether this enemy originated from this build or was in the E3 2010 build, but considering the fact that it's an original enemy, it likely would have been in earlier builds. There also seem to be boss versions of this enemy, as the names Kingmander and Honemander were found in the files of the game. This likely would have been similar to Hooktail and Bonetail, as there seems to be both a Mander boss and a skeleton version of it. Other than the Manders, there were also some differences regarding the enemies in this build. The Koopa Troopas fall over, more like they do in 64 and TTYD, rather than hiding in their shell. The Magikoopa also looks closer to the classic coloration and possibly would have been a separate enemy, rather than just Kamek. The next time Sticker Star was shown was at Nintendo World 2011, and here they showed a one minute trailer of the game and released more screenshots. This was the earliest full trailer that we have of Paper Mario Sticker Star, and it reveals a lot of information that wasn't previously shown at Nintendo Conference 2010. Overall, this build looks very similar to the late 2010 builds, but obviously seems to be a bit farther along in development as there's more areas other than grassland that are shown. A lava area with a few dry bones is shown, and a jungle area similar to Jungle Rapids is shown. Then, it shows an early stairwell from the Goomba Fortress, a mountain area with parabombs similar to the bridge in Goomba Fortress, and a snow-themed area with ice bros. Finally, it shows an early decal burn, which looks completely different from the final game, because of the layout and the buildings. There appears to be a building with a mushroom logo, possibly serving as a shop or an inn. Despite many of the design changes in late 2010, oddly enough, the mushroom design is still the same design as the previous three Paper Mario games. There is also a third path in Decalburg that was not in the final version, which probably meant that there was a connection between Decalburg and Surfshine Harbor. Overall, the gameplay and battle system appear to be mostly the same as the previous build, but there is a little more information that was revealed. The S meter is still present in this build and is visible in the overworld. In this footage, it's only partially filled rather than being fully filled. The UI is also much different than it is in the final game, since the HP and Elf bar are both different colors. 
in battle, the camera angle is still fixed to the side like the previous builds, but the background is for the grassland is slightly different. Other than that, there hasn't been much change to the gameplay or the battle system from what was shown in the trailer or any of the screenshots. A few months after Nintendo World 2011, Nintendo made another trailer for E3 2011, and this time, a lot of things have changed. So far, the game was still simply known as Paper Mario, and the logo was basically the same as Super Paper Mario's because of the font. In the first couple seconds of the trailer, they show an early version of the opening cutscene, which has some very important differences from the final version. Instead of six royal stars, there are seven, which implies that we're, there were a few more chapters planned in the game that were eventually scrapped. The world map also seems to be completely different, meaning that there were a lot of changes between E3 2011 and the final game in terms of layout of worlds. In Decalberg, the layout looks much closer to the final version, but the shop and building next to it look slightly different. Most of the locations shown are somewhat close to how they look in the final game, but the area with the falling parabombs still has the mountain background rather than Goomba Fortress. Much like the E3 2010 trailer, the music was an early version of a song heard in the final game, specifically the title theme. Before we look at the aspects shown in the trailer, there's also early artwork shown at E3 2011 worth looking at. Before they switched to using the construction paper-like renders for the final game, the artwork for Mario used the same style as those in TTYD and Super Paper Mario. There was also artwork shown that contained a sticker based on the mystery box item from TTYD and Super that was not used in the final game. In the trailer, the battle system seems to be much closer to the final game, such as thing stickers being present and the camera angle is not to the side anymore. The UI is very similar to the previous builds, but the rainbow S meter was removed. The appearance of things is also different, since they appear to stickers rather than actual objects. The coins in this build appear to be similar to those in TTYD and Super, rather than the cardboard coins used in the final game. The recovery block also looks much closer to its design in 64 and TTYD than it is to the final game. Between late 2011 and early 2012, the game started to look more and more like the final version, but there were still a few noticeable differences. Most differences were only with the UI and sticker designs, which is why this section will be much shorter. At Nintendo Conference 2011, in September, the stickers had a hexagonal shape and the instrumentation of the music was slightly different. At E3 2012, some of the screenshots show an early Bah Hammer being a sleepy sheep on a stick. Shiny and flashy stickers also had a slightly different design, likely indicating that they had more attack power. The nice and excellent messages after doing an action command also had a burst shape behind them. This was the only time that the burst shape was ever seen, so it was probably only used at some late build of the game, and was eventually scrapped. Outside of the trailers and screenshots shown throughout Sticker Star's development, there have also been a lot of scrapped things found in the files of the game. To start, there are a few areas and locations that went unused during the final game. One unused area is identical to Sticker Fest from the prologue, but the left path is blocked off by rubble. Another area, labeled as Pipe the Mario's House, was indicating that Mario's house was originally in the game, likely in an opening cutscene. There is also data for a pipe maze found in the files, which would have worked similar to the fast travel pipes in 64, Thousand Year Door, and later Origami King. In this map, there are collision objects labeled for worlds 1 through 8, which farther shows that there would have been more chapters planned in Sticker Star. There is also still textures in the game that likely would have been used in the card maze that was seen in the screenshot in E3 2010. Peach and her missions, like from the first two games, were also likely going to be in this game, since Peach's sprite has a backside. Several underused stickers are found in the game's files that were eventually scrapped from the game. There's a Piranha Plant sticker which likely would have been used as a defensive attack since it could have acted as a hat. The Pebble sticker probably would have functioned like the item from Paper Mario 64 and was likely cut due to Monty Moles also being cut from the game. There's a Spiny Egg sticker which presumably would have been dropped by Lakitu's, but since they are cut as a battle enemy, the sticker was also not used. 
there is a Super Leaf sticker, which was likely the early version of the tail sticker and an unused large version of the leaf sticker. As mentioned earlier in the video, there was also EXP originally planned to be in the game, and a coin bonus when defeating an enemy would have originally been star points as indicated by the data string called BTL underscore star point underscore get underscore lucky. There are a lot of unused enemies in Sticker Star, and they all range from early designs, unused in battle, and completely unused. Other than the enemies mentioned earlier in the video, other early sprites of enemy designs were found in the files of the game. The Sombrero Guy, Accordion Guy, and Maraca Guy originally had outfits, and the Pokies also had early designs that came after the E3 2010 designs, but before the final. Some enemies still seen in the final game were originally intended to be fought in battle, and have sprites showing them being damaged. These enemies include the Bullet Bill and Bullet Bill Blaster, the Bonsai Bill and Blaster, the Lakitu, and the Fishbone. In normal gameplay, the Lakitu is normally just out of reach of triggering a battle, but even if you were to use hacks to levitate and overlap with the Lakitu's model, a battle still won't be triggered. Then there are enemies that weren't used in the game at all. Only two scrapped enemies, Patui and Shiny Drybones, have sprites, while others only have evidence of them existing in the files. In a text dump, 14 enemies were shown to be originally planned to be in the game. Other than the ones I've already mentioned, Deep Cheap, Monty Mole, Inky Piranha Plant, Krober, and several enemy variations were listed. There were also a few other enemies not listed in the text dump that were planned to be in the game. This included Snorkel Goomba, which was a variation of the Goomba, and Red Cataquax, which were likely used in locations with water like Surfshine Harbor or an unused area. Other than unused enemies, some bosses had unused moves or effects. Bowser Jr. was originally going to use his paintbrush as an attack, and Bowser has unused speaking animations. Anyways, that's most of what we know about the beta and unused content in Paper Mario Sticker Star. This game was originally much different, since it was supposed to be a continuation of the first three games. There's still a lot more that we still don't know about, since the full E3 2010 trailer is currently considered lost media. If you want to help us find more information about the lost trailer, or anything about the early versions of the game, consider joining the Paper Mario 3DS Discord server, which is linked in the description and the pinned comment. In this server, we research and discuss things that we find about the early versions of Paper Mario Sticker Star. This is an ongoing effort, and I want as many people to join as possible to help us search for the lost trailer, so anyone with knowledge of the beta is definitely welcome to join. I would also like to thank Fawful the Great 64 and Penky YT for joining me in this video. Yes, thanks for having me. You can find my channel at Fawful the Great 64. I recently made a video of fighting all of Count Black's minions at once in Super Paper Mario, so if you're a Super Paper Mario fangirl like me, or just interested in watching such a thing, feel free to check it out. I have other Mario videos I make too sometimes. Thank you for having me. My channel is called PenQYT, and I mostly make videos about Paper Mario the Origami King. Currently, I'm working on a fan dub for Paper Mario the Origami King, and it would be greatly appreciated if you checked it out. Anyways, thank you all for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe for more, and make sure to check out my Discord server and Twitter if you want to. Goodbye.